Yes, today we're going to be looking at the entire Halloween series. Okay, now this is most definitely going to contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen Halloween 1 through 8, do not continue watching. Unless, of course, you handpick or if you don't care about spoilers. I suppose I should say I haven't watched either of Rob Zombie's uh, attempts at uh, the series, but I've yet to hear a single thing that would make me even the slightest bit optimistic as to how he did, so I don't intend to ever do. Now, I fucking love Halloween. It is one of the best horror movies. It's the the build-up of atmosphere. I mean, John Carpenter, in my opinion, the man has not done a downright bad movie. Not all of it is, like, top-notch. I'd say Halloween and The Thing are probably his best of, of what I've seen. I've yet to, but I've yet to see a movie by him that was not at least worth watching. The, the build-up of atmosphere, the, the, the voyeurism of the, the, the way he uses the camera, just, I, it, I haven't seen anything else where, um, and it, and it was certainly unheard of at the time, the way it's like, you just, you see shot after shot, I mean, the, the very first shot is, um, the uh, the the infamous um, POV, you know, where he um, kills his sister, and then finally you realize, shit, this really was a six-year-old. And after that, there's shot after shot where you think, this is a POV, this is Michael watching them, and then he enters the shot, and you're like, shit, and it just the and the way it the way it follows how he he stalks them and you just, you know what he's capable of. You've already seen it, and Loomis keeps um, talking about how, you know, and just slowly, gradually, you realize this is not a human being, this is a force of fucking nature, he is pure evil, and he's just gonna kill everyone he gets a chance to. The theme is fantastic, the, the piano thing, and... Carpenter did that uh, himself with some uh, friends who knew how to play, and I love that it's it's. Um, I I personally love when low budget works, when it doesn't look low budget, and when it's. I mean, sometimes indies are way better than what Hollywood cranks out because they take freedoms that Hollywood doesn't dare to. I, if you don't know that Halloween is a low budget movie you're probably not going to be able to tell because they covered up real nice. I mean, the you know, they, they have what uh, looks a lot like dolly um, camera moves and just the whole thing. You know, they, they had to uh, get, like, leaves and then they had to paint them in the autumn colors and then they, they had so few that every time they'd shot um, a, a sequence, they had to pick them all up and scatter them over the new area, it just, it's fantastic, and he got fucking Donald Pleasance, and the man delivers a stunning performance, and just, and the writing, I mean, how many movies have the teenagers and the kids talking like teenagers and kids, it's just, the, the stuff you hear them say, and the kids aren't irritating, I just, there is just a smidgen of movies that have kids where they aren't irritating. You know, it's, um, I mean, you actually do kind of sympathize with Tommy, you know, the, the gradual, what's the boogeyman, and, you know, the boogeyman's right outside, and the, the whole thing. And, and just in general, the characters really aren't all that irritating. Um, they're... I mean, I suppose you could argue that the uh, PJ Souls character and uh, her boyfriend Bob are maybe, you know, a little grating on the nerves, but they're not in it for all that much, and they don't do all that much. They, you know, they're they not quite nails on the blackboard annoying, you know. It gave Jamie Lee Curtis a career, and it's a really good performance by her, you know. I um, And it's it's like... 
one of the first slashers. I've heard like arguments that I think there's one Black Christmas or something. I haven't seen it. That's apparently a little bit before, like maybe '77 or something. That is technically speaking the first slasher, but you know, it's one of the very first, and it's not that much of a slasher. Movie. It, apparently, the um, the the thing about premarital sex being a death sentence was kind of just coincidental in this one. It's just because the people who aren't having sex are, you know, not preoccupied. They, uh, you know, they, they notice when the killer is near them, so. And it's, it's barely got any blood or gore at all, and I think it, I think that was the right choice. It's, very much, it's it's the hints, the the implications. It's almost Hitchcockian, and just the way you know, like when when you see him walk into um, um, the you know when you realize, shit, he's in the room with uh, with P J Souls and Bob, you know, and just the scene continues, and then they don't seem to react to him, and like. What happened? Where you know, and you know he's nearby because it's just been established, um, and it just and and then he, you know, flies out of the fucking um, uh, closet and just nails Bob and just at first you're not entirely certain what's going on and then he removes his hand and Bob just hangs there uh, like impaled on the just fucking perfect. And then the very ending with, you know, Laurie keeps trying to kill him and keeps doing stuff that you'd think, you know, that's gotta completely kill him. And he just keeps getting up, you know. And I mean, this, this was like uh, eight years before, six years, before uh, the Terminator, you know, so. And then at the very end, you know, um, he gets shot like six times and he flies out and then um, that line... I, I can't quite tell if she's saying, I think she's supposed to be saying, was that the boogeyman? It sounds like, more like, what's the boogeyman? And he responds either, you know, as a matter of fact it was, or a matter of fact that was. Anyway, you know, he goes out to, to look, just to check, and he sees he's gone, and he's just got this look of, fuck, I knew it. Shit, I, I knew I couldn't stop him. I knew bullets w weren't going to be enough, and it's just... It's the perfect fucking way to end it, because he's out there, and nothing's gonna stop him, and there should never have been another Michael Myers story.